Offline. Today we have part two of our Manhunter gameplay. The first part was the setup, showing you our loadout, all that kind of stuff. Now we're actually gonna get down to the board and fight the Manhunter. Now, the Manhunter is my all-time favorite nemesis monster. He's an expansion for Kingdom Death Monster. Love fighting this guy. I think he's just really, really unique. He's got some really interesting tactics. Um, I've only had a little bit, to, I think, I really think I've only beaten him once in about six fights that I've had with him. So, and I don't believe I've ever gotten to level two. I think that the, the campaigns where I've had him, I've always ended up wiping out before I got to my second fight with him. Before we get down to the table, I wanna mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. This is a fantastic website where you can buy, sell, and trade games. If you're just looking to build out your collection, just looking to buy some more games, they can help you out. They've got what you're looking for. If you want to get rid of some games, you can sell games to them. They have a thriving used game market over there, and one of the ways they maintain that used game market is by buying games from people. However, they also trade with people. If you have a Board Game Geek account and you've set up a trade list on Board Game Geek, you can then go over to Board Game Co., drop your username, your Board Game Geek username into Board Game Co. They will compare your trade list from Board Game Geek with their stock and build a custom trade list right there on their website. If you go check it out, be sure to click on the link in the description below so they know I sent you over there. Board Game Co. makes it easy to buy, sell, and trade your way into a better collection. All right, let's get down to the game topper and we're gonna fight the Manhunter. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna get this show on the road now. I uh, do have these out. These are to help me keep track of when I have and haven't used certain or, or the, the uh, survival actions. So the survival actions I currently have are dodge, um, uh, dash, and then rather than encourage, which is one that happens in People of the Lantern by gaining language, in uh, People of the Sun, which is the campaign I'm playing right now, I have embolden. And the way embolden works... Once per round, if I have no plus one strength tokens, I can spend one survival to gain a plus one strength token. When I'm knocked down, I lose all plus one strength tokens. So obviously that works well with Sun Eater that lets you spend plus one strength tokens to surge. Uh, and so since I don't have surge, uh, the green survivor over here is the only one with the surge token for me to keep track of that. Now, anybody who's familiar with People of the Sun knows that if you lose a fight to a nemesis monster, the entire People of the Sun campaign is over. So, yes, it is pretty crazy for me to add the Manhunter to this since he shows up in year five. And normally in People of the Sun, you don't start seeing nemesis monsters until year 21, I believe. It's a 25-year campaign. And then basically year 21 through 25, you run through a series of nemesis monsters. Well, not year 25, I think, is the Sunstalker. But, um, but year 21, 22, 23, 24, for sure, are nemesis monsters. So putting the Manhunter in here is going to add the potential of the campaign ending way early. But I love this guy. I haven't fought him in a really long time. And I wanted to film him because he, he's the one monster that I really wanted to have on the channel that I just haven't done yet. So I put him in here. If I lose the, the people of the sun, I'll restart it. It's not a big deal. Uh, let's see. I think that's everything. And we're going to get started here. Now, normally in a nemesis fight, since the survivors are fighting on their home turf, they're fighting at the settlement they get to go first. However, the Manhunter takes us by surprise and he gets to go first. So, short stride at the beginning of the, man of the monster's turn, move the Manhunter three spaces towards the closest threat and turn to face it. If the Manhunter is adjacent to any threats, perform Tombstone. Well, as you can see, he is three steps away from everybody. So... The question becomes, who do I want to need to use dashed right off the bat? Uh, who ha You know what? Let's just go with who has the most survival. And it is Ellen. Well, Ellen and Gata both have seven. Uh, Ellen is green. Gata is blue. Gata is my heavy hitter. So, you know what? We will... 
Manhunter is going to turn towards Gata. What's his... He, uh, yeah, Gata's got a ton of armor too, but I think we're actually going to dash anyway. So the Manhunter is going to move three spaces. One, two, three. Then he performs Tombstone. So prior to him performing Tombstone, Gata will dash... All right, so he spends one survival, but remember, they have rawhide armor. So on a roll of six plus, oh, come on. Ah, five. All right, so he does spend the survival. Six plus, he would have gained the survival right back. Um, he is just going to, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. No, 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 hold on. This is my other real good attacker down here. I mean, because he doesn't have a weapon. This is ranged. So Duala down here, I think, is one, two, three, four, five. This is where Gato will go. All right, so that was just the short stride. Now the Manhunter needs to draw an AI card. Ween Cowards. This is an advanced one. Your thoughts are no longer alone. You hear the Manhunter's challenge echo within your mind. All survivors stand and full move toward the Manhunter. Then each survivor not adjacent to the Manhunter is knocked down and suffers monster level brain damage. Oh boy. All right. So, oh no, look at this. So full move towards the Manhunter. One, well, we'll go one, two, three, basically right back four. So there. Okay, and then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so let's see. All survivors, each survivor not adjacent to the Manhunter is knocked down. So knock down and knock down. Uh, and suffer monster level brain damage. So let's see, that means Coddle. So Coddle, who by the way has no insanity, takes a brain damage. And Ellen, who has no insanity, takes a brain damage. All right, so now turn to face the most adjacent threats. So either way, doesn't matter. And then perform Tombstone. Well, We've already used Surge for uh, Gata here, but Duala can definitely use Surge to get out of the way of Tombstone. Oh, there, that's there. So we're up here. Duala is going to use Surge. She also has. All right, she rolled a seven, so she gets to keep that survival. Well, which technically she loses it and then gains it back. Um, and she's going to Surge. She's going to go one, two, three, four, five, because I really want to harvest these acanthus plants because that, that's going to help me out some, hopefully, survive this fight. But he is going to tombstone, tombstone pile drive uh, Gata here. So tombstone, one speed, four accuracy. Gata has two evasion, though, so six accuracy. We got a decent shot of avoiding this. Uh, damn it. He just got me. So he does tombstone him. Three damage. Three damage to the waist. Uh, Gata has three armor there, so we'll go ahead and take that. But then he is knocked down. So that's a great way to start. Got three people knocked down right off the bat. Okay. And we don't have encourage. That's not something that, that we have, so... Okay, this is interesting. Before we move on, let me think about the order of things here. When they got knocked down... Oh, they're actually not adjacent, though. Um, okay, it doesn't matter. Coddle and Ellen were... I was thinking they were adjacent. They're not. Coddle has the defender fighting art, but he has to be adjacent for it to even matter. So I was trying to decide what the, uh, the timing there would be with them both getting knocked down if defender could still work, but... Again, irrelevant. All right, so the only person standing up is Duala. 
And again, I don't have any way of making people stand up. So Duala is just going to try to harvest this acanthus. A three. Find nothing, archivist terrain. So nothing, nothing doing there. And I mean, that's no reason really even to move. She might as well just stay there. So he, again, wait, well, maybe there's a reason to move. Uh, one, two, three. He can't get next to her. So she's going to stay where she is. He is going to move three spaces towards her. One, two, three. These are destructible. So that destroyed that stone column. We have murderous gaze. Furthest threat facing in field of view. So that is Duala. Because these people aren't threats because they're knocked down. The Manhunter looks at you menacingly. Murderous intent invades your mind and you drop to your knees in pain. Turn the Manhunter to face the target. And then intimidate target. Roll 1d10 and add your understanding. Let's see, I don't believe... Yep, zero understanding. So roll a d10. A 3. If the result, oh, well, if the result's less than 10, so it was going to be less than, well, no, it could have been a 10. You're knocked down. Suffer brain damage, monster level brain damage. So, again, zero insanity. So she now has that, uh, the box checked. And suffer three damage to monster level hit locations. Three damage to the waist. Okay. All right, so we're off to a great start here, y'all. But now they do stand up. Okay. First things first, Coddle, one, two, three, four, five, is going to... Nice. All right, so he does get one fresh acanthus. So you can archive this to fully heal one hit location, including injury levels and armor points. So now, Ellen is going to fire the claw head arrow. It's normally six plus accuracy. She has one accuracy, so it's five plus. It's only one speed, though. Nice! Five. We got it. All right, so the good news is there that if you hit, the monster gains minus one evasion. We just made him a little bit easier to hit. Now we can see if this wounds him, this has six strength. So as long as I don't roll a one, it's a wound. All right. We've got uh, Gata here, who's going to spend one survival to dash because his club, the bone club, is cumbersome. So he's got to use movement and action. Movement, yeah, movement and action to use the bone club. So he's going to dash to move into the blind spot. Uh, and let's see if he gets that back. Oh, almost. Nope. So he's down to five survival now. Okay. And the Bone Club has two speed. And it would be five plus for accuracy uh, because he's in the blind spot. So it's going to be four plus because of the minus one evasion. Both of them hit. We've got Battle Scarred Arms and Hardened Torso. So wound, if the attacker is adjacent, they may spend monster level survival. If they don't, they suffer a severe injury to their arm with the arms, with the battle scarred arms, uh, with a plus two to the result. And then the hardened torso, if the attacker is adjacent, they may spend monster level survival. If they don't, they suffer a severe injury to the torso with plus two to the result. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, so we're going to, I mean, we'll go with the arms first, I guess. All right. And that th those happen on wounds, by the way. So the five strength for the bone club, one strength here, five for the bone club, that's six strength, eight toughness, uh, anything but a one basically is going to wound him. All right, so that's a wound. But now we have to spend one survival, which... We will, because we get plus two to the roll, but a severe injury, let's, so, so let's say three is the lowest we could get with the arms. That's two bleeding tokens. Four is a dismembered arm, and with him, he's got a two-handed weapon. 
dismembered arm means he can't use the bone club anymore. So we're definitely spending the survival. All right, but we don't get to roll to try to get that survival back because that's not a survival action. Um, so that's unfortunate. All right, so again, here we go. Anything but a one, four, oh, that was the arms. We already did that. All right, now we're doing the battles, the hardened torso, anything but a one. We got a crit, so we don't have this wound reaction. First, let's make sure, move the AI card. Critical wound, the Manhunter coughs up blood. The attacker gains plus one strength token. They may spend four survival to treasure this moment forever and gain plus one permanent strength instead. Ooh, then that's all my survival. Oh my gosh. No, I think I need dash. I need dash too bad. I need it to be able to survive this fight. Uh, any other time I would take that in a heartbeat. But plus he's using the bone club, which has five strength already. We're not gonna take that. We're just gonna take the, uh, the one strength token. That's, that's, that really sucks though. All right, so that's the, the survivor's turn. Oh, or did I want her to move her farther away? No, I don't think so. She's okay. All right. So that's the survivor's turn. It is Manhunter's turn. He's going to turn towards Gata. He's going to attempt to tombstone pile drive him. Gata is going to use survival to dash. And we'll see if we get it back. We do. We get it back. All right. So he's still at four survival. He is going to dash just around back here. One, two, three four just right here so ai we've got you've already lost it's a mood card when you when this comes into play draw an ai card all right so here's the additional ai card while this is in play survivors suffer minus one to all severe injury rolls oh my god discard this when a survivor dies so i'm glad i have the whisker harp because we're going to be using that right away um, now, okay, so for this other AI card, listen up, closest non-deaf threat in field of view, which would be Gata. So he's going to turn, face him, and move. All right. Two speed, two plus accuracy, Gata has two evasion, so four plus accuracy, Two damage. After damage, the Manhunter boxes your ears. If the target isn't already deaf, they suffer the deaf severe head injury. Which, let's see, deaf, you get minus one permanent evasion and a bleeding token. Well, how much movement does he have? Six movement. If he's here, if I were to go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. No, so he can, he can definitely catch me. So no need to run away. All right, so we're gonna have to take our chances with this. So four plus. They both hit. Mm. Body and legs, two damage. I'll take both of those because I've got three armor on both. Oh, you know what? I couldn't have dashed anyway because Gate has already used dash, so. No need to even worry about that. All right, so now now he's deaf. He just suffered the deaf severe injury. So now he only has one evasion instead of two. Uh, and that means, let's see, two, uh, was it, what did I say, two? No, get okay, one bleeding token. And of course, five bleeding tokens means they die. All right, so now Duala stands up. First thing we're going to do is try to use the Whisker Harp. On a roll of six plus, we discard the mood. There we go. Nice. All right. So you've already lost. It is back out of play for now. And now, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just close enough. So she's going to... All right. So first, she will use Embolden. Okay to gain a plus one strength token. 
she's then going to spend that plus one strength token to surge because the the bow is cumbersome. She has so she has to use an action and her movement to use the bow. All right, so now she's surging and using her movement to fire her bow at at the catgut bow at the uh, the manhunter. All right, she's got one accuracy. So six plus, five plus because of his minus one evasion. They both hit. Exposed forearm has a failure, but it doesn't, it doesn't apply because he's not within four spaces, so we're okay there. Uh, offhand, if you hit with a whip, well, we don't have any whips, all right, so reflex, full move the manhunter onto the space occupied by the attacker. All right, so we'll definitely go with the exposed forearm first. She's got one strength. The bow has three, so that's four strength. So four better. Failure. Oh, failure. I oh, know, again, it doesn't matter because not within four spaces. Okay, so now here we go offhand. Again, we need, uh, we just rolled a one with that. Let's get a different one. We need four or better. Three. Oh my God. All right. Full move the manhunter onto the space occupied by the attacker. One, two, three, four, five, six. So then that knocks her down and throws her five spaces away. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So next we'll go with Coddle. He is going to. Oh, wait. She I was going to flip that. She dashed. Okay. Um, Coddle is going to use the cat eye circlet. Reveal the next three hit locations. The gritty groin. Okay. The ossified knee guards, which are super dense. I don't have any frail weaponry, so that's not a bad thing. The, the failure reaction is pretty bad, though. And the callous thigh, that has a very similar failure reaction. So we're going to put the groin on top, followed by the knee guards and the thigh. All right, and then Coddle's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Oh, he doesn't have surge, so five. Not trying to end next to him. He's just trying to get down to uh, Gata in order to use bandages to heal up some of that bleeding. All right, and then one, two, three, four, five. Gata can't even get close enough, so Duala will go first. One. Oh, we already did that. Okay. So Duala, one, two, three, and she's going to attack with that bone dagger. So five plus three speed. They all hit. They all hit. Oh, on a perfect hit. On a perfect hit, she gains plus one survival. So that knocks her up to seven survival. All right. All right. So here we go. Let's definitely do the gritty groin first. She has one strength. The bone dagger has one strength. You know what? She's going to use one survival for embolden. All right. Embolden is going to give her plus one strength token. Oh, and she has the Rawhide armor set. Let's see. She gets that back. So she's still at seven. <clears throat> All right. So she's at two strength. So plus one from the bone dagger. So three strength, five or better. Ah, failure. All right. So nothing with the groin. All right. Five or better. Six. She wounded the ossified knee guards. All right, the calloused thigh. Seven, she wounded that as well. All right. Okay, we're, we're not doing so bad here, y'all. I'm feeling pretty good about our chances against him right now. So let, let's see what happens from here. All right, and then uh, our man here is just going to go 
One, two, three, four, five. How much strength does he have? Two strength. Should he go hands-on with this guy? Try to get a, a tooth and nail attack against him? No, no, let's not press our luck. All right, Manhunter turn. All right, so first he moves towards the closest threat, which is already there. It's Duala. Uh, Tombstoner, but she's going to wait. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, we get our these back. This is the beginning of a round. So all these are back. So Duala is going to dash. See if she doesn't get the survival back. So she is at six now. She's going to dash, though. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We'll just go here. No, because then he could be next. To, we'll go. Uh, she's going to go there. I'm trying to make it where it's hard for him to be adjacent to multiple of my people at the same time. All right, so then nothing happens with that. AI card, we've got an advanced one, Endless Barrage. Random threat in field of view. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Gata. Okay. Full move the monster towards the target. Perform gun action. This attack gains plus two speed, minus two accuracy, and after damage for each hit, make an additional attack roll. Continue to roll until all attack rolls miss. Holy. Okay. All right, so plus two speed. So this is gonna be, oh, and target is doomed. I, I can't, I can't even use, okay. I can't use any survival here. So target is doomed. Turn to face target. If target is not in field of view, perform impatience. No, so we got that. Ranged attack, speed is one, but we gain plus two speed. So speed is three, okay. Minus two accuracy, so that makes the accuracy four plus. Um, and then my evasion is one, so five plus. Okay, so five plus. Two, one misses, but two of them hit. All right, so two damage to the head and body. He has two armor left on the head. He has a light wound on the body. But now we had two hits, right? We got to roll again. Again, we're looking at five plus, right? Yeah. One misses, but one hits. And it hits the head again. Heads down to zero armor. Okay. Not awful. Five plus. Oh my God. The body, that's a heavy wound. That's a critical wound to the body. He's knocked down. Critical wound to the body. Oh, wait a minute. Real quick, y'all. Gata has abyssal sadist. I know that he is wounded... The Manhunter at least once. So his insanity would be at one or one higher and he'd have at least one more survival. All right. Anyway, I think it might, doesn't necessarily matter. Let's see what happens here. Got a 10. Okay. 10 for the critical, the severe injury to the body just means he gets knocked down. So we're okay there. But now we, we this hit. So here we go again. He's still getting shot at with the Endless Barrage. Six? Uh, oh my God. To the body! Jesus. Seven. Broken arm and ear shattering crunch. Suffer minus one permanent accuracy and minus one permanent strength. This injury is permanent and can be recorded twice. Gain one bleeding tokens. Uh, so, and one more bleeding token. He's at two bleeding tokens now. And he's still getting shot. Jesus. 
it really is an endless garage. To the waist, that's a heavy injury to the waist. Okay, finally it misses. And it's over. Holy crap. All right. You see what happened there, right? I said something along the lines of, hey guys, we're doing pretty good here. I I'm feeling pretty good about this. And the game, I don't, I really don't know why I still say things like that. I blame y'all. It's your fault. The game retaliates every time you say something like that. All right. So that's the end of the monster's turn. She stands up. He's still down. Um, Coddle's going to go first. And I think the most important thing is to get the bleeding tokens off. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five. And then he's going to use his action to use the bandages. To remove two bleeding tokens from Gata. Okay. Does anybody else have bleeding tokens? I don't think so. No, just Gata. All right. So that's Coddle's turn. Now, Duala's going to come back up, attack in the blind spot. Five plus. All of them hit. Perfect hit. So she gains a survival. First strike, so this has to go first. All right, so we'll look at the other two after this. First strike has to go first. Um, she has the strength focus, so five or better. <gasps> nice, crit, so the reflex doesn't happen. Critical wound, this is the, called the gritty visage, by the way. Gain three survival. She's already maxed out on survival. If attacker has the prey disorder, they scream in defiance of their predator. They lose the disorder and the monster suffers an additional wound. Well, they don't have that disorder, unfortunately. So it's just the one wound. So one, two, three, four, five AI cards. We're about to lose one. So four AI cards. So we've got to wound him five more times to kill him. I really hope that was Endless Barrage that just got taken out. So we still have the Hunter's Hat, which is impervious and has a reflex of full move the Manhunter towards the attacker, turn to face. If adjacent, there's a knee between your legs. Attacker suffers severe waist injury with plus one to the result. Um, all right, so we can't, that's impervious, so we can't actually hurt him with that. So we're going to do solid shoulder first. All right, this also has a reflex. We'll deal with that in a second. All right, so we need, again... What I say, five or better? Five or better. Oh, all right. Reflex. Turn the manhunter to face the attacker. Roll one d10. Six. If the result is greater than the attacker's insanity, which it is, they gain the prey disorder. Oh, I wish. Oh man. All right. And suffer the flea brain trauma. So prey disorder. You may not spend survival unless you are insane. And the flea brain trauma. You are knocked down and suffer knockback equal to your movement towards the closest board edge. Let's see. Knocked down, suffer knockback towards the closest board edge. This is the closest board edge. But knockback is going to throw her into this pylon here, this column. So this gets archived, but she suffers one damage. to her waist so that's a light wound to the waist but then she does gain this is helpful 1d5 insanity so three insanity so now she is insane so that's good so she can use survival now but that means this other one doesn't happen all right so the only person left one two three four five six is Ellen, so one accuracy, seven, six, five plus. They both hit. Corded neck has a reflex reaction. Gun arm has a wound reaction. One, two, three, four, five. He can get there. So this one will be he moves onto my space again. Well, so let's do. Yep, yeah, quarter neck is a within four spaces reaction, so that one 
we'll be okay. So we'll do the corded neck first. So three, four, you know what? She's gonna spend a survival to gain, to do embolden and gain plus one strength token. Oh, by the way, when Duala got knocked down, she lost her strength token that she had gained from um, Embolden. But now Ellen has gained a strength token. So that means five total strength. So three or better for the wound. Six, so that is a wound. All right, now for the gun arm. The gun arm has plus two toughness. So normally it's five strength that we have, which would be, so three to wound. Now we need a five to wound. Critical. What happens when we critical hit the gun arm? You break the Manhunter's trigger finger. Persistent injury, ruined pistol hand. The monster suffers minus two accuracy when performing gun action. So we will put these minus two accuracy tokens on the gun action card to remind us of that. So that was all in all pretty decent turn. It is his turn now. Well, unfortunately for Doc Cottle, he is the closest threat. Oh, but it is the beginning of the round, so everybody gets their survival actions back. Doc Cotto will, of course, dash. Does he get that survival back? He does, so he's at six still. Dash. Uh, where are we going to go? One, two, three, four. We'll just go right there. Oh, God. Endless barrage. Random threat and field of view. So one through five, six through ten. He's coming after Ellen. Full move of the monster towards the target. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Perform gun action. Now remember, gun action does have minus two accuracy. So Ellen might do better here than poor Gata did. All right, so plus two speed, so it's three speed. All right, and then two plus accuracy. That makes it four plus. This makes it six plus. And she has one evasion, seven plus. All right, seven plus. <laughs> Still two of them hit. Okay. Oh, wait. I forgot about this part. At the end of the gun action, the blast leaves a painful ring in the ears. All non-deaf survivors within four spaces of the Manhunter suffer monster-level brain damage. I'm pretty positive it was both Coddle and Duala. Monster-level brain damage. All right, so Duala will be at two insanity. I can't remember if she actually had that insanity at the time, but we're gonna we'll do it now. We're we're gonna retcon as best we can. Coddle, on the other hand would have suffered brain trauma. We have Accept the Darkness, so plus two to brain trauma. Seven. He gains a random disorder and then 1d5 insanity. So I'll just give him the insanity first. Uh, so five insanity. And then a random disorder. He is immortal. While you are insane, convert all damage dealt to your hit locations to brain damage. You are so busy reveling in your own glory that you cannot spend survival while insane. All right, so that, that got that back to where it should be. All right, so now we're, we're at Ellen taking two hits from the Endless Barrage gun action. To the waist and the legs. So waist is at zero armor, legs have a light injury. All right, now again, seven plus for accuracy. 
They both hit. Head and arms. Ellen now has two armor on the head and has a light injury on the arms. Seven plus, this shouldn't be that hard to miss. One misses, one hits. Oh God. To the body. She has a light injury to the body. All right, seven plus. Jesus. Legs, that is a severe injury to the legs. 10. Lost balance, the blow sends you sprawling, you are knocked down, okay? So she loses the plus one strength from embolden. All right, so seven plus. Finally, it misses, okay. Dude, that is such a brutal combination. So Duala stands up, Gata stands up. We will have Coddle use the cat eye circlet. Still no trap, all right. Uh, rippling abs are super dense, that doesn't matter. It has a reflex reaction. Uh, that's one of the severe injury reflexes. Calloused elbow, another severe injury reflex. Ooh, this is a death blow. We'll definitely do that last. Oh yeah, because if we can, okay. So if we can wound, wound, and then wound on the Achilles tendon, that's the death blow. We get the death blow reaction, which is always really cool. I'm not even gonna read it right now. I can't remember what it is. I'm not sure if I've successfully pulled it off before. A lot of the Nemesis monsters have it. I know the, I don't know if they all have it, but I'm pretty sure the Kingsman has it. And I know the uh, Butcher has it because I've actually managed to pull it off on the Butcher. So Gata is going to go first. Gata is going to dash. Puts him down to four, but then he gets it back. So he's at five. One, two, three, four, five into the blind spot. All right, so Gata has minus one accuracy, which is corrected by the minus one evasion from the Manhunter. Uh, so it's going to be five plus in the blind spot with the Bone Club. One hits. The Calloused Elbow. Gata will use Survival for Embolden. See if he gets that survival back. He does not. So he's at four survival. Um, that gains him one strength, though. I don't think he can do that because it says for embolden, you gain a strength token if you have no strength tokens already. He does have one strength token from whatever that thing was that happened earlier, one of the hit locations. So I don't think he can gain another one. So he's not going to. So. So he has two strength, the Bone Club has five, so basically anything but a one will wound. It's an eight, so that is a wound. I mean, it's the only AI card the Manhunter currently has is Endless Barrage, that's not great. Uh, wound, if the attacker is adjacent, then we spend monster level survival, which he will, to avoid that severe injury to the head. All right, and Duala is going to come up. Oh, wait, that's him. Duala is going to go one, two, three, four, five. All right, and she's going to attack with the bone knife, bone dagger in the back. Five plus. All of them are hits. I know what two of those hit location cards are. Watch the third one. I know how Kingdom Death works. I... I I'll be shocked if the third one's not the trap. So here are the two I know. Here's the one I don't. The two I know, Achilles tendon, rippling abs. Oh, okay. All right. We're all right. We're all right. Okay. Gritty boot. Uh, let's see. Gritty boot has a failure reaction. Full move the Manhunter onto the space occupied by the attacker. All right. So we're going to do rippling abs first. Duala will use survival for embolden. Let's see if she gets it back. She doesn't, so she's a six survival. And that gives her plus one strength. So that's three strength total, five or better. 
Nine. Oh, she doesn't have any luck. That was so close to a crit. So she did wound him. All right. Endless barrage is gone. There's only one wound left to kill him. Okay. Uh, what's this? The re reflex. I need to spend monster level survival in order to avoid a critical leg injury. We will do that. All right. So here we go. Death blow. Minus two toughness to wound this? Oh my God. Okay. So she's at two, three strength, including the dagger. So that would be five or better to wound. This makes it three or better. Three or better, and we successfully do the death blow. Here we go. Yes. All right, y'all. The Achilles tendon. We can go and get rid of that. Achilles tendon. Death blow. If the Manhunter is killed at this location, it falls on its gun. It fires, blowing a hole in the monster's chest. Blood sprays everywhere. The survivors cheer as their predator dies. Perhaps they'll finally be safe. Yeah, right. All survivors gain plus five insanity. So that puts Coddle at 10 insanity, Duwal at seven, Ellen at five, and Gata at seven. Plus one understanding. Okay, so that gives everybody one understanding because I don't believe anybody had it before. Correct. All right. Plus one courage. Also, well, no, Duala does have one courage, as does Gata. All right. So, is I can't remember. Is two courage where? No, three courage is where bold happens. All right. Uh, and then a random fighting art. All right. So, let's see. Coddle gets unrelenting. If all of your attack rolls in an attack miss, you may spend one survival to re-roll all attack rolls. Not, I mean, that's not the best. Well, I guess that is actually pretty good because Coddle is not a good attacker. So if he ever does attack, this will help ensure that the attacks hit. Okay. Um, so then Duala, Ambidextrous. All melee weapons in your gear grid gain paired. Ambidextrous cannot be used if there are any shields, two-handed or heavy gear in your gear grid. Ellen gains cross arm block, which Dual already has. That's where you can assign the damage to your arms if you want. And Gata, I need to be sure to add um, Gata, a vessel sadist that last time when he wounded him, gained plus one survival and plus one insanity. All right. Anyway, uh, he just gained acrobatics. When you are adjacent to the monster, you may spend movement to place your survivor on any other space adjacent to the monster. All right, so let's see here. We, the victory, plus one hunt XP, which for everyone is their first hunt XP. Plus one weapon proficiency, that's, nobody gets that. Rewards, the group realizes the settlement needs better protection. If the settlement does not have it already, place the settlement watch innovation on top of the innovation deck. This assures it will be drawn from the deck if the group decides to innovate this year. Le okay, level one, reward. Gain the Reverberating Lantern Rare Gear. So Reverberating Lantern, uh, it is a unique item. At the start of any hunt turn, before an event is revealed, you may do Sonorous Rest event, which is in here. Sonorous Rest says the survivors activate their reverberating lantern. Its unsettling vibrations cause headaches but drown out all sound within its small area. The group can now pause safely while the lantern remains active. Each survivor has time to either rest or tune. If you rest, you plug your ears and do your best to relax, sleep, and let your body restore itself. Gain two survival, gain an additional plus one survival for each green affinity. Uh, or tune. Sleep is for the weak. You stare into the darkness and become one with the reverberations. Gain plus three insanity and gain an additional insanity for each blue affinity you have. And then if we have War Room, it unlocks some other stuff. And if we have Storytelling, it unlocks some other stuff. Interesting. Okay, so what else? Roll 1d10 on 2 plus. A survivor that dealt the killing blow gains the tough fighting art, which was... Duala, she got it, so she has tough as well. Tough is when rolling on a severe injury table, unless you roll a one, add plus one to the result. This does not include brain trauma. Also, it cannot exceed 10. 
Wow, I cannot believe I managed to pull that off. I really thought that Gaeta was done for. I mean, granted, Gaeta probably is pretty much done for as a fighter. He uh, took some pretty severe injuries there, and his stats are kind of tanked out at this point. Uh, like, like bad. They've they've gone down the drain. So I might have to pull somebody else out of off the bench to be my tank from this point forward. Uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, Gata, and who was the other one? There was somebody else getting blown away for a minute there. I think it was, wasn't it? Uh, um, Ellen kept getting, uh, ended up with that endless barrage really hitting her pretty hard, but I think she's gonna be all right. Gata though probably is pretty much done. Wow, that was a really cool fight. If I make it to the level four Manhunter, in this uh, campaign, then I will film that and bring it back to y'all as well because level four has a lot of stuff in the hit location deck that is really difficult to deal with. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Click on the subscribe button, click on the bell, click on the like button. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.